meeting in your unit and then calling a lot of colleges and uh, schools in Indore and asking them for a pitch event. I don't remember the name of the event, but it was a uh, idea pitching event, I guess. Yeah, so those yeah. are, I guess, very, <laughs> very fond memories of working with you. I'll start with a more formal introduction. Uh, Mohit Mata is currently tech lead working at D. Shaw Gurugram office. He did his computer science engineering from IIT in the, in the year 2019. Mohit has been an avid explorer and a tech evangelist who doesn't shy away from pursuing unorthodox explorations, be it starting crypto chalk during college, which was a cryptocurrency news aggregator, or consulting startups like Noba into reaching their MVP. It is our pleasure to have Mohit as our first guest on the Alum Talks podcast. Welcome, Mohit. We believe that there are a lot of exciting stories that we are eager to hear from you. So let's get this started. Sure, my pleasure to be here. I think we'll get to unravel more about Mohit as and when we talk about different uh, journeys and his life de decisions. So, and uh, before jumping on to our discussion, let me set up some context for this episode. So, we are going to deep dive into Mohit's journey, his experiences from Bikaner, then to IIT Indore, and now to D. Shaw, his learnings as a content creator, and some advices that he has to share for current students and people who, are, who have just started their professional journey. I think I can start. One of the things that I'm really curious about is your early college life and how that evolved into your later years of college. Starting off with one of the things that I n knew about you back in college that was that you cracked Google of Summer of Code, which was one of the most coveted kind of programs uh, back in undergrad. I just wanted to deep dive into how you approach these programs or internships while you were in college and also your early, maybe first semester and second semester, how that helped you into getting into these. Yeah, I think uh, one of the major drivers when you are in college is the peer group that you are in and the seniors you get into touch with. And I was a uh, very blessed to have some very good seniors like specifically i'd uh, take the name of uh, abhinav tripathi i'm not sure if you have uh, if you if you know abhinav or not oh, yeah. but uh, abhinav had cracked the uh, uh, google summer of code twice so uh, like i i like when i uh, joined the college uh, i was more into development projects software development projects and trying to learn stuff trying to I was trying to make something cool I, I made a couple of apps and uh, I was just enjoying that thing and um, then I, I was not enjoying uh, competitive programming and I, I would I recall like the uh, like the whole pool of students who were actually into computer programming were divided into software development and competitive programming stuff so uh, because i was more into software development i thought what i can do what are the good programs to which which should uh, help me learn more and get better hold of uh, development uh, and that's where i got into touch with abhinav Bhaiya and then he mentored me all throughout and he told me how to apply for programs like google summer of code and um, it wouldn't have been possible uh, without him. So <laughs> all credits to him on those fronts. In, in my second year of summer, I didn't even know what Google Summer of Code was. And I realized I missed the, that opportunity after the deadline was passed. And in the third year, again, oh. I tried, but I did not get in. Uh, that's another story. But it's uh, from there on, I think having 
some kind of mentor group and like some mentors and uh, seniors basically really helped and just exposing myself to all these opportunities which then also brings me to a other question of your internship at gojek just want, was curious what led to you deciding on doing internship at gojek and how was your experience there oh so there is a very funny story attached to me ending up at gojek um so honestly i was not getting any interns uh, because i was rejected by the companies which visited our campus uh, first like b shaw rccm goldman uh, amazon um so so all of and i'm i'm not sure if i'm microsoft yeah so um and, and the reason for that was uh, i was working on a startup idea uh, with a friend uh, from iit bombay the next company that came after the diwali holidays was was gojek i started preparing actively i started doing competitive programming something that i never did before so so this is a very important aspect that i was not a competitive programmer and uh, when i when i sat for gojek uh, that was a, a cat like aptitude test uh, which they did for screening they were they weren't asking any competitive program they weren't giving any coding test as uh, most uh, software development companies do so but despite them giving an aptitude test i was not able to clear it i don't know why uh, probably not a good day or probably i wasn't good enough but i wasn't able to clear it and uh, uh, then on that day itself uh, luckily uh, on the hiring drive my uh, uh, one of our seniors uh, tilak bhaiya was on that drive and i sent him his resume uh, sent him my resume via whatsapp that hi bhaiya can you give me a referral instant referral the company is in the campus you are taking the interviews is it possible that you can give me a referral and if you if you guys like if the hiring committee likes i can come for the interview immediately and i just tried like right like this doesn't happen it's very unconventional out of the box way but it worked out so tilak bhaiya saw my resume resume was good because i had google summer of code on my resume there and gojek was specifically looking for someone with good development skills so they called me uh, instantaneously and like this also raised some eyebrows in placement cell and some of the placement cell members were not okay with it because i was jumping the process this is right so uh, Uh, like someone complained to the placement head uh, of that time and uh, like she she was like okay mohit you go and i'll handle all of it and eventually my interview went really good and yeah like the the whole hiring committee was very happy with the, my profile and they offered me a role so i i think I was just lucky enough that the stars aligned on that day, and everything went the way, um, like everything went in my favor, basically. I think you're calling it yeah. luck, but a lot of us wouldn't have tried to reach out to a senior who was in the hiring committee, and then maybe thinking that on the spot that there's another chance, and just taking that chance. So. It was, I think, your creativity as well. Yeah, you can put some. wait to that aspect as well post the interviews i got uh, comments from my friend that uh, what a jugad was <laughs> what kind of unconventional methods you taken but okay and my my philosophy there was there's no harm in trying when you have nothing to lose that is pretty interesting because even i have seen in no not an internship exactly but different places of how these unconventional ways somehow work out sometimes like i remember reaching out to a prof on twitter which i never thought i would do <laughs> and that's the only place i got a reply or i tried email i tried linkedin but twitter was a place so i feel like these unconventional ways oh. <laughs> might just end up <laughs> getting you that internship or anything else also one other yeah. interesting thing was you doing startup in your second year which i think is again one of a kind uh, because i i don't i don't think was even 
aware or was even planning on doing something or or many of us do so i think again like that keeps like when i look back at uh, and look at your all the things that you have done it just feels that you have the drive to just keep uh <laughs> trying out things uh figuring out stuff and then yeah using unconventional ways now um, talking through the later years of college one of the things that's very unique that you did was actually you did an research internship after you graduated so i just, i just want to know more about that and i'm sure audience would also <coughs> be pretty curious about this because generally what we see is you you complete your graduation and then probably you spend 3 year 3 months of summer maybe doing pursuing some hobbies <coughs> or just traveling and then uh, you end up uh, in a job or just join the job directly so yeah i just want to highlight on uh, how you ended up in belgium <coughs> yeah sure so you raised a very important point actually that after our third year internship a uh, lot of us don't think of interning further and we generally just uh, complete our studies in college in fourth year and then boom we land up in a job uh, wherein like if there is an option uh if you can delay or joining and gain some other experiences uh, it's always good or it, like even i was not aware uh, uh, like during my second year but if i was uh, i would have tried to get a foreign internship in my second year as well uh but anyway the motivations i i had uh, comment on first so basically i was in a dilemma whether to work outside india or to stay in india a lot of my friends were having foreign office and i was just not sure about leaving india at that moment so i thought that i'll get a internship which will give me a flavor on how is it to live outside india will i be able to you know uh, just uh, live uh, <laughs> live live happily uh, away from my family and all so that was the prime reason that i thought that i'll get a foreign experience and by the time i made uh, my mind it was already too late that was what i was told with my uh, like all, all my seniors told me that and even some of my uh, peers who were uh, like uh, who, who 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 had interned previously uh they were telling me that it's too late because most of these programs which offer foreign internships were closed and uh, uh like uh, from experience people were telling that it's too late for someone to sponsor you now so uh, no no it it will be just a waste of effort trying now so but i really wanted it so <laughs> so i just uh, made a list of all the computer science professors in um, around like top 100 qs universities and oh. i was just browsing through all these websites and i got their emails and like while while i was getting their email i was just writing the context that okay this professor is in uh, machine learning he is in computer vision he is in I, i would just write that domain and i would just i just made an excel list and then one by one i started mailing all these professors with email tracker on so i realized that i ended up sending more than 700 emails in total with this email tracker on and whenever i would get this notification that a professor has just opened my email i would send him a follow up email that uh, i really want this and so so this is something uh, what happens a lot of professors were not even opening my email but um, uh, those who opened had some follow up discussions and eventually this professor in kaiulivun uh, belgium he liked my profile and uh, my pitch was that i don't even need a stipend just uh, sponsor my stay and my round trip ticket and i'll work for two months so he was very kind enough to also offer me a stipend and he sponsored my stay and he sponsored my round trip tickets and that's practically all i wanted so so yeah uh, it's it's just a matter of chance and i think 
uh, had I not tried it, I would not have got it. Uh, mm. Cold emails are really powerful. Like you, you, they can take you places you never thought of. So that these were pretty, pretty interesting experiences, Mohit. And now I would actually like to go back in time and. During your twelfth twelfth grade, I think you gave SATs, and no surprises that you scored eight hundred out of eight hundred in your math and physics test. So, were you thinking about pursuing bachelors from abroad, mm-hmm. and what was that school of thought, and why it couldn't happen eventually? Oh uh, yes, so that was my backup plan. That if I don't make it to an IIT, I'll. I was thinking to pursue my bachelor's from UK. Um, I was too late to uh, for for US, uh, but I was thinking to apply for some Singapore and uh, U- UK based universities. So that was the plan. So that's why I apply. I I gave SAT, and I was having acceptance from some good uh, UK universities, but. Um, But yeah, then I I got lucky and made it to an IIT, so I dropped that plan. So you you had gone on to do really well in the JE Advanced to get a rank of seventeen hundred, and so this rank could have landed you a seat in any of the IITs. So were there any specific reasons you chose Indore, uh, and you might have some expectations of how it will go after you made that choice. So looking back now, do you think those choices? were justified or the everything went as per your plan uh so was making me introspect my whole life <laughs> <laughs> okay um <laughs> uh, so so yeah i think uh, i always like in my 8th class i had thought that i want to pursue computers and i wanted to pursue a career in tech now uh, i was not sure on uh, what to do even i was not aware of something like iit existed because uh, the background where i come from uh, it was not that of a popular choice uh, in my city so i wanted to be at the center of technology and which which made my decision easier a uh, lot of people lot of seniors were all suggesting me to take iit bombay with any branch but um, i was like if uh, even if i was getting civil engineering at iit bombay and i was thinking that even if i take that i'll be studying civil just with with no interest at all and i wanted to pursue computer so i thought that let it be i'll at least study what i always want wanted and i was already fed up studying um chemistry physics which was any way unrelated to computers i felt uh, maths is somewhat related so won't <laughs> uh, say uh, won't comment on that but yeah uh, that's why my decision making was easier even though indore was a very new iit that time yes uh, i i really just had interest in computers and i thought that this more i can do in that field because i love that field uh, so that made help me make my choice yeah i think you talked about a really good point about having the clarity before starting your engineering because a lot of us they just do it for the iit tag i think the clarity is really good for uh, your long term career perspective as well uh one thing you did mention in your answer was about your city so i think you did your first to 12th education from the same school in bikaner and uh, so my question here is do you think that your entrepreneurial zeal your interest in technology <clears throat> and how the way your personality has shaped up do you think it has to do with your schooling or your hometown bikaner <clears throat> or was there something totally different that had a huge impact on your personality or overall development bikaner has a strong influence on all of these um because specifically because uh, bikaner is a like my family family and bikaner in general is uh, very religious and has certain 
traits that I feel uh, are a strong reflection of my personality today. Um, be it uh, entrepreneurship, because, you know, Marwadis and Gujus are primarily yeah. uh, business communities. So uh, I, I feel like a lot of my business instincts come from the fact that I uh, come from a business family as well as uh, the fact that everyone around me was talking about business in Bikaner in all the social gatherings I used to go. Even I come from a <laughs> business family background and my dad and I still talk about some stocks. He reads something in the newspaper and then he tells me, ask me to do some research about this particular company, see if it will be profitable. So I think it's just a whole different way of lifestyle that Marwadis, Gujus or core business people live and that can actually have a huge impact on children like it did on you. So that's interesting to know. Okay. Hi. So talking about Vikanir, there's one more interesting aspect. Um, my father told me that he's just a manager in the factory that we own. So okay. we, we are a partner in. So all throughout while I was in my school, uh, I was just told that he's just doing a job and we uh, like uh, he has taken a education loan for me. So in case, so I was like, Papa, in case I don't uh, do well, what will happen if I'm unable to pay that loan? So uh, he, he, he was like, we'll have to switch home to a, <laughs> to a normal home, <laughs> to a simpler home. <laughs> so, so I, like, I, I was not told that um, uh, what was my background. I was just kept unaware of all those aspects. And um, I think that's a good parenting that uh, my father did because he just told me that uh, there's no plan B. You have to study and you have to do something of your own. So one of the interesting things that all three of us share commonly is being in Indore for at least four years during our undergraduation. So Indore is a very unique city in a way that it has both an IIM and an IIT. And there are a lot of good engineering colleges like SGS, ITS, TAVV and so on. So there are a lot of student communities and the city is also famous for its, its very tasty food. So living in Indore for four years, Mohit, do you have any particular things that you liked, you disliked, or how did you like Indore? I think uh, Indore was culturally for me very similar to Bikaner, uh, like in terms of food, a uh, lot of things. We call it Bhujia in Bikaner and they call it Sev in Indore. And then um, I think uh, in general, in, in terms of the taste of the food also, it was very similar. So for me, it became very easy to adjust to indoor the food. Uh, I think on a daily basis, the thing that affects you most about a city is the food that you get in. So uh, that that was really good. Other than that, I think, uh, it, it as you said, it's it, it's having both IIT and IIM. And we were having a lot of these uh, events like IFI Summit or yeah. IIT IIM, IIT versus IIMs. Uh, so, so all of these um, gives you a good exposure and uh, maybe a good connect with uh, the folks in IIM as well. And uh, it also helps you gauge the possibilities of pursuing an MBA with that closer, closure uh, interaction with I am students as a part of this e these events. So uh, I, I like some connections from I am that I made as a part of uh, this I five summit. Uh, there are people who are working with me today in the show as well who are from I am Indore whom I met as a part of I five summit. Wow. So wow, that's very interesting. And and I I have a good network as a because I five summit uh, happened and I got to know some people as a part of that uh, and and that you know just helps into you having a greater reach wider network which could be of use could be of help 
professionally someday or the other um, and in general i feel like uh, indore has a very unique vibe uh, and it it has because i'm very spiritual as well i used to go to omkareshwar and ujjain also very frequently yeah. uh, probably like at least once in two months i would visit omkareshwar or ujjain and uh, that was very good because as a student i feel uh, spirituality or uh, like following certain um, ideology helps you because it it just gives you faith that in hard times what do you do it just gives you faith and hope to stick on to your thoughts your uh, you know principles when there is so much of things that might be happening around you someone might be cracking xyz or doing that and you might be stuck with inferiority complex or you might be intrigued into getting into um uh, something like some nasha or something some kind of addiction which i believe like any sort of addiction at the time of uh, when you are student is not very good it it can potentially derail you from your goals uh, yeah like a lot of people fell into addiction which is not good but if you are trying something and uh, staying in your limits uh, maybe that's still fine but uh, there's very thin line between you and you falling into any such stuff so indore has limited scope of these things as well i feel <laughs> so i think uh, in general i feel indore uh, the people are really good so, loved my time throughout in the city It's moving on one of the things that we both were curious and we had a discussion about this as well that how, that we wanted to ask this to you is what, what is your opinion of finding passion versus pursuing something that is hot right now because that's i mean if i i am wanting to do something and if i see something really hot or in trend right now i'm naturally motivated to do that just because i know there is probably a lot of potential in that uh, whereas i'm not spending a lot of time maybe in sp- finding passion so what what is your general th- uh, thought about that oh uh, you for example so so it's it's possible in most cases that what is hot right now means that a lot of people have suddenly started uh, pursuing that and that also means that it might have a lot of competition or if not competition it might uh, mean that the supply demand economics might just not work out in your favor because is the industry large enough is the opportunity large enough that if, even if so many people are following uh, into that domain uh, that might uh, uh still have some space for you to make it big there so if if you think that there is a uh, there is enough space to grow and uh, ample opportunity and then it also combines with your passions or or if it is not that off um with your passion that like, it could be something that that has a lot of scope that has a lot of opportunity but you absolutely hate it then definitely it is not something that you should pursue i feel but if it is something that has a lot of opportunity and you are not sure whether you like it or not maybe it is worth a try yeah we are coming from a perspective of somebody let's say who is in their first year of engineering they they are pursuing engineering because it's it's a natural choice for them maybe because of being good with problem solving so now when they are in a particular bar- branch and they are not sure if computer science is something that they want to pursue so how do you see what that person can do should they just start coding because it is hot in the market right now you learn good money or should they find ways to really figure out what they really like which can also be very different difficult in these times when we have a lot of options so how do you see that for from a student's perspective 
maybe who is in their first year um so i think uh, first year in the first year i think we judge too quickly on whether we like programming or not um programming is not that you are doing competitive programming programming is uh programming is mainly about solving something with the help of technology and uh, if if i i definitely can say that uh, computer science as a field has ample amount of uh, opportunity and space to grow and for the near future i feel that uh, it will continue to expand so uh, i feel if you are in an iit you are already in a good position to pursue a career in technology and i feel uh, like if if you are very uh, uh, if if you already have a strong thought that you want to pursue an mba and you want to get into management or you want to pursue something else if you already have that specific um uh, choices already made in in your mind that you want to do that go ahead do that and make them right because no matter what field you go in if you are very good at it you will definitely make space for yourself but yeah. uh, if you are not sure about any other field as well then better to be in a space where there is ample amount of opportunity and better to be in that flow you know so that you will at least get something uh, nice and not end up in a no man's land uh, because because if you just keep on exploring for a extended period it can be a catastrophe like you you might miss on certain opportunities which could have been nicer uh in in all terms in terms of uh, maybe compensation in terms of corporate experience or uh learnings uh, all of that so i feel like for a for someone in first year i think you should continue um, uh, like programming if if you are into that field you should because most of the fields uh, will have applications of programming and programming usually will have greater opportunities compared to uh, other fields like say mechanical or uh, any other uh, civil or other fields basically so you should continue to program you should uh, at least try solving some puzzles or uh, try following some uh, good people on youtube get perspectives on why people did what they did and continue your exploration into a uh, greater depth and at least continue till third year maybe if you are not finding other passions you should continue exploration and even after third year if you strongly feel that okay you cannot code uh, and you have all, you already have a backup plan then okay go to that plan but if you don't have a plan then i would still say that you should continue to code and take at least one year of corporate experience uh, as a coder and then think of switching domains because you are not very sure of other things as well so it's better to be in a safer place that has a greater cushion of you being uh, you know uh, not being a be, uh, being into a no man's land i think the judging way too quickly is one point i think i resonate very well with because in the first semester i remember again it was programming was entirely new to me and as uh, in one of the classes that we had for programming the cs ones i scored really really bad and i i thought this is not for me but later down the line again the same thing occurred to me of how at the end it's just about puzzles and it's just a tool in which you can solve the puzzle and i think as yeah. years progress and again exploring projects <clears throat> being part of clubs doing some research with profs i think that's where Uh, the exploration actually really helped me and by third year or fourth it came naturally to me of mm-hmm. just developing stuff or building new tools for other people to use so i think i i did that mistake like i just it way too uh-huh. quickly i remember telling to my friend after the exam that 
<laughs> the programming is not my game at all i i i don't know and i hate, hate doing it but it's later after the exploration exploration right. that i understood what it actually is in my story too i feel like uh, uh, in my first year i was not doing competitive programming at all i was just ma- doing some software development and that was the case in second year as well uh post that uh, when i had this realization that okay i have to do a job for some time i had no option but to do competitive programming and uh, start with that so i did that and uh, initially i was not enjoying it because i was unable to solve problems so so to everyone out there who is listening to us if you are unable to solve problems initially that could be a factor in you getting demotivated and thinking that and mistaking to think it as that you probably don't have interest in this field but you probably haven't pursued it long enough so just stick to it pursue it for a while and to me then i started uh, this competitive programming while i was preparing for my uh, job interviews finally uh, and that was after i completed my internship right so that's probably in my third year now um, that's when i started liking problem solving a bit but that was only a bit as well then uh, after i got placed i didn't do uh, any coding i was just enjoying my fourth year fun is also important so <laughs> all, all of my fourth year was um, all fun and after that when i joined d show i started coding in python and then i started solving problems on lead code in python or any or, or a different different platforms i just started solving problems in python and then i started liking it that it's just solving puzzles it's like even today my younger sister comes to me and asks me some puzzle that okay bhaiya ye batao <laughs> ki uh, ye kya hai like which city has no gate and should say electricity stuff like that <laughs> so uh, programming is uh, something like that you are trying to think outside the box or solving puzzles so at after a while if, because i think i is uh, stuck to it long enough i started kind of enjoying it so yeah i think uh, even in my case i did not do well in those in that course of first year and got an i got a thought that you know maybe it's not for me but eventually i think at the moment that we are right now in the job industry having some knowledge of coding or at least let's say a very general language like python helps you in all the kind of jobs so during my fourth year when selecting our when selecting my btp project i got in touch with large sir who wanted to make a digital twin kind of a product and it needed very extensive python coding and i did not have that uh, i was not that hands on on that but i thought maybe it's, it's also a good opportunity for me to spend some time with uh, that particular problem and eventually i started liking it so what what i thought earlier that it it, it is a very tough thing or maybe it's not for me i think it's more than just being programming it's it's a language or a tool that you can use to solve problems not just related to computer science but now with every domains so i think eventually if you if you do not really hate it i think uh, everybody should try their hands on with some some sort of programming language and do basics at least to improve their problem solving skills right agree <laughs> yeah so i think talking about the jobs uh, one of the other things that students at this moment are really worried about is the ai revolution that we are seeing right now and a lot of people who do not completely understand how it is transforming the kind of jobs that traditionally we used to have so in your perspective you are you have spent around 5 to 6 years in the corporate how do you see ai is uh, changing the jobs uh in the software development field and overall as as engineering students or as somebody who is early in their career what should they do differently now to maybe upskill themselves or be prepared for what what can come in the future 
well uh, i think uh, as engineering students it's a win for us that ai is taking over because we'll have a lot of opportunities to make this ai softwares so i think it's a job expansion for us and in a lot of spaces it might make work somewhat easier for programmers um at places say where you need 10 developers maybe you will need 9 because github copilot things like github copilot can shoot up productivity and mm-hmm. uh, uh, lesser programmers can do the same job but at the same time it is compensated because you'll need more program- programmers to make those ai softwares now coming on to what should students do differently first of all they should not worry about that if they are programming then they will not get a job you will get a job no matter what most likely <laughs> like just just try to pursue it with utmost sincerity and uh, uh if if you don't get a job you'll do something for sure i'm sure <laughs> because you'll you'll maybe create jobs then uh, then uh, uh what should they other than that like in terms of their preparation i think uh, for a fresher the interview process is going to be the same in my like i have taken a lot of interviews and i have done a lot of campuses and last year uh, like i also did uh, campus hiring for iit indore as well for disha oh, wow. and uh, i went to iit khadakpur and couple of more uh, campuses so in my own capacity uh, i think my advice is that don't focus a lot on uh, ai projects don't focus um, a lot on ml projects straight in your uh, second or third year without having a good hold on the fundamentals which is still problem solving and data data structures so i was seeing a lot of you know high level ai stuff on these resumes of of the candidates that i was screening and they were not well versed with their uh, basic concepts of problem solving and most of the companies still will test you on problem solving on uh, all, all of on on your data structure skills rather than your ai projects because uh, software engineering still is the same and if you want to pursue a career in ai and ml it's good you can if you, if you have a mindset that you want to do higher studies then i would suggest that okay then it is fine to let uh, ds algo take a back seat and you can focus more on Uh, research and pursuing uh, ai ml stuff then it makes sense but somewhere you have to be clear in your priorities whether are you preparing for job interviews or whether are you preparing for a masters abroad and based on that you should start preparing and if you are preparing for both maybe you should you you will have to work even harder that you uh, focus on your problem solving concepts and even i think even when you do masters i think it is always a good thing to have a better hold on problem solving and mm-hmm. uh, data structures because just uh, importing a machine learning model and uh, da- uh, importing a data set and applying that machine learning model on that data set is not machine learning that that's usually what a lot of people in undergrad do it's a application but you are not doing any fundamental research and like that won't be counted um, <laughs> like people even if they are uh, screening you for machine learning interviews they won't count it uh, as a machine learning project because you don't know the internals of it so don't get driven away with the buzzwords i would say still focus on algorithms problem solving data structures if you are preparing for jobs and if you are into research get across well with professors focus on research papers that will help yeah i think these are pretty uh, gold nuggets for somebody who is preparing for their job interviews right now these are really good 
advices and i hope people listening to this would appreciate your insights on those so i think uh, now we have had a pretty long conversation around your journey uh, more deep dived into some of the relevant topics for students right now we want to segue to a more fun set of questions and these are something that you can answer whatever you get on top of your head like as a rapid fire kind of segment so uh, what was your college's best memory <laughs> uh, in the first year i went to girls hostel ka lift and i just um, uh, i i tried to hide myself there to save myself from gpl on my birthday oh. <laughs> <laughs> this was the most unique ways of uh, yeah. saving oneself from gpl that ever and, and then people were planning uh, like trying to find me and uh, it was all on my college group so indore was a Uh, small we we had a small batch right so just a batch of 116 people and that was a well knit family kind of a batch uh, and then everyone was discussing on the group that where is mohit this area is checked and I, mohit not found things like that were <laughs> so and, and i was also reading those texts okay they have checked this place they didn't find me <laughs> so, so it was kind of fun you? Yeah, they finally found me, oh, and no. I, I got GPL and plus uh, uh, cold water shower. <laughs> I think extra beating Because for making extra, them. Ex- extra beating for making them work harder to find me. <laughs> uh, one biggest learning of your life. Um, if. things fall as you wished if things happen as you wished it's good if they don't happen as per your wish it should not deter you from uh, doing your efforts you should keep on trying and it's even sometimes better if things don't come across as you wished because probably that's making way for better things so trust trust in the almighty's plan bigger plans and keep doing your effort that that was very well said <laughs> love that any funny incident of your class that you remember i think the funniest one was again this gpl one <laughs> which was in my first year other than that uh, something inside yeah, the there... classroom setting that you remember because i'm i'm really hoping you were uh, more present in the class than i was <laughs> oh, okay uh, yeah there were a lot i think uh, we used to tease some people in the class like there was someone who whose name we would always take whenever anything comes up that uh, any any volunteers and we'll take his uh, his name and then he'll get triggered why are you picking my name <laughs> so there are all sort of these funny things we used to do and um, yeah and, uh, like sometimes uh, one of the incidents was that uh, in anirban's anirban sir's class um, so so i bunk for the full semester i i just i never attended his class because his class was at around 9 in the morning and i used to sleep late so i never woke up for the first lecture and i skipped his class for the full semester and then uh, one fine day he announced that he'll take viva on some other day but he'll take viva he just made that announcement and i talked with my seniors that what will he ask in the viva so he the seniors said that he'll ask easy questions to the people who attended the class but if you haven't attended the class uh, then be prepared for uh, like very hard <laughs> questions and he'll he'll roast you very bad in the viva 
So I thought, okay, Viva is still around five, six classes away. I'll start attending class. I'll show my face. And the next class, the very next class I went and other one sir said that, who are you? I am seeing you for the first time in this class. Are you in this class? <laughs> Uh, so I, it kind of backfired because now I was highlighted even more that okay I am someone who skipped the whole semester yeah anything that you would do differently if you entered your engineering college today uh I wouldn't have learned the lessons that I have learned if not the if I wouldn't have made the mistakes that I made during my college times. So I think that I would have done the exact same set of things probably. But maybe if I if I would have known uh, that I eventually have to do uh, this, uh, maybe I would have initially taken. uh more uh, programming more seriously in my early years last one is who do you believe in idols and do you have somebody that you follow as an idol uh although i believe in taking good lessons from anyone and wherever you can get learnings from but um, i think uh, my grandfather has inspired a lot in uh, uh, inspired a lot in my journey basically um, any time i used to stress on okay while i was preparing for je let's say or maybe while i was preparing for my placements that time it's it's very stressful and it can be very overwhelming uh, for someone uh, like as an as a student it can be very uh, stressful and that time he used to always put the shlok from gita that karmanye vadika raste ma phaleshu kadachana so which which means that apna karm kiye jao aur phal ki ichha mat kar ya phal ke bare mein mat soch so i took it as my life mantra and it has always helped me into focusing more on the efforts and your uh path rather than just thinking about the fruits of what you are doing or or the end goals wow that's a that's like a pretty good piece of advice which also segues into my question that i had for you what is the best advice that you have ever received from someone and one advice that yeah, i think this is <laughs> and one advice that you would love to leave our audience with and also me and shub with I I think we have this karmaniya vaade ka raste maafal issue ka rachana. Yeah. Well, I think that that was it, Mohit. Thank you so much. And I think through this journey, I, I knew you before. Of course, me and Shub both knew you. Uh, and we knew all the places that you have worked at. But I think this gave us a really different kind of dimension on all the things that happened in the back end. uh for example <laughs> the story at gojek how you got there it was pretty unconventional <clears throat> and also your early days uh, at iit indore and even right now how you are constantly exploring mm-hmm. different things always inspires me always inspires shop and that's the reason we thought we should definitely have mohit as a like first person uh, on alum talks podcast Yeah so thank you so much for take uh, doing this yeah thank you so much for having me glad you felt that uh, i can add some value here and it's it, it's it was great to connect with you guys after so long after college like i i just uh, went down the memory lane recalling all the <laughs> beautiful days that we have had in college this is really nice I was thinking about my school <laughs> experience because my birthday comes in April and there's whole one semester before that where I was involved in a lot of things. I was not prepared for my own, so I, I, I have that. It didn't feel good for sure. 
ओके होपफुली आई एम आई एम होपिंग दैट द पीपल हु विल बी वाचिंग दिस वीडियो दे आर अवेयर ऑफ व्हाट इज जीपीएल इज प्लीज जस्ट टू कम आई एम प्रीटी श्योर एवरीबॉडी हु इज एट एन इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेजेस नो व्हाट इज जीपीएल